Hey everybody, so 2019 marks a big year in the welding industry. Over 100 years ago, the AWS was founded by Comfort A. Adams on March 28, 1919. This year we're going to celebrate their centennial anniversary. As a token of our appreciation for everything that the AWS does for us, we went ahead and built them a sign using their centennial logo. So we're going to show you some footage of how this piece was built, as well as take a trip to down to Miami and talk to some of the specialists at each of the different departments to tell you about some of the benefits and some of the opportunities they have for you as a welder. So we're going to be talking to people from the foundation, talk to you about scholarships. We're going to talk to different areas as far as sections, what you can do in your local community and how you can communicate and network with people in your area that are also AWS members. We're going to talk to the training department as well as code specifications, certification and testing areas. So stay tuned. we got a lot coming for you. Hey guys, while uh, Jason Becker heads down to uh, Mi Miami, Florida at the AWS headquarters, we're going to go ahead and upload this AWS sign. So I'm going to go back over to CAD. So already here, I uploaded it from a DXF file uh, the AWS people sent me. So I had to do some editing here so the torch would have no problems cutting. So after that, I basically transferred it over to CAM. So in CAM mode, I already adjusted the lead ins and lead outs. Then I transferred it over to CNC and made sure everything was good. I'm going to load a piece of metal in here and we're going to cut it out eighth inch metal. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this plasma. I'll see you guys in a little bit. We'll see what Jason's up to right now. Today we're here in beautiful Miami, Florida at the headquarters of the American Welding Society. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go inside and talk to some of the representatives about the different programs and some of the benefits and resources they have available for you as members. So let's go ahead and take a walk. All right, so today we're here with Matt Miller, the executive director and CEO of the American Welding Society. So Matt, thanks for having me in, uh, in your facility, first of all. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Well, Jason, thank you for coming. Welcome to AWS World Headquarters here in Miami, Florida. So let's talk to the, uh, the viewers about some of the programs and stuff that you guys offer you know, within your facility. Well, AWS offers a broad variety of programs to serve and support the welding industry. Everything from education and training to standards and specifications and codes, uh, certification, we do exhibits, we offer conferences, uh, and, so, and the list goes on and on um, for what we offer. Really, what I look at it is that AWS is an information provider of, of the necessary requirements uh, that you have for the welding industry. Uh, so pretty much anything that falls in category with uh, specifications and best practices, AWS offers. You mentioned specifications, so how many specifications do you guys have? Well, it comes to code and, codes and standards, uh, American Welding Society has roughly 200 standards. These are supported by almost 2,000 individual volunteers that come together in a neutral form to develop and, and form these standards and codes for industry. So what are some of the other programs you guys offer? I know you guys do some training as well. No, absolutely, we do training. Uh, we offer training for a number of things. Probably our most popular training uh, is the test preparation course for the Certified Welding Inspector Program. Uh, we off also offer a variety of online training modules for everything from um, the, the baiting, uh, basics of welding to uh, welding symbols, uh, to metallurgy, we've got quite a library uh, that we offer online for, uh, for, for mobile-friendly devices. Okay. I'm definitely, I'm familiar with your, uh, your code books. I was fortunate enough to take the CWI exam over in Orlando. Uh, did you pass? Also, I did. I did. Good, first, good for you. First pass, uh, first shot, so I'm kind of proud of that. The, um, but you guys also have the online training, which I'm familiar with that as well. A lot of people don't know about the online resources there, and there's some great information on that. I know uh, we're going to talk later on today with some of the, uh, the folks in the programs and they're going to be able to elaborate on those specific areas for us. Absolutely. And one of the things that's really exciting about the online training is we're starting to move and shift towards uh, what you'd expect to see, um, you know, even on YouTube. We're, we're moving more towards the video-based training that you're going to start seeing over the next couple of years. Uh, online training's kind of shifted and changed, and we're trying to shift and change with it. So it's, uh, we're pretty excited about what some of the things we're putting together. Well, great. Uh, do you want to talk about anything as far as the membership benefits and everything that are, that are available? Well, you know, I don't, you know, I, I talk about membership and I talk I just talked to a group of students last week in Houston, and one of the things I talk about with membership, we do have a lot of great features of membership. We, we offer discounts for our members. We actually have the Welding Journal, which is a world-renowned pu publication that, they, that you get as a member. Uh, you have access to different resources online. But one of the things when I talked to these students last week was one of the benefits of AWS that goes unrealized by many is the network. The network that you form um, within this industry that you can tap into other people, you can reach out, you can form relationships, and you can really get information 
information by communicating with those already in industry. That's the real benefit of AWS, you have access to all of these people in the industry. That's where I think the real true value of AWS membership is. Just being able to get in contact with like-minded people that are in the same trade and have the same passion that you do. Exactly, and here's, here's an example that I'll use. You know, of all of the jobs that are being hired, um, very few of them are actually posted on the internet. 85% of jobs that are being uh, filled are being filled within people's networks. And 70% of jobs that are, being, that, are being, uh, that are being shared and being filled aren't even posted on the internet or on, people, on people's websites. They're all being filled by networks. You go to your section, uh, you go to your local, um, your local chapter meetings, that's where you're gonna find a network where you can get a job, where you can get information. Uh, and that's really the way that uh, AWS supports the welder, the welding inspector, the engineer, the researcher, you have it, we're there for them. And I, I can kind of speak to that, you know, firsthand. I actually had a student, we, we just started the, the, the Central Florida chapter, and at the charter meeting, we had one of my current students, as well as one of the representatives mm -hmm. from industry, they met there, they, you know, they're sitting at the same table during the, uh, the ceremony, and they kind of hit it off, and he went for a job interview the following week, and they hired him right out of the program. That's the benefit. I mean, it's, it's definitely, I mean, it's there, you know. It is, and I think that's one of the things we've got to communicate better, and we've got to help uh, our younger members understand that you know, getting to meet and know people, is, that's where the real value is in these kinds of organizations. Well, Matt, I thank you uh, for taking your time to speak with us today, and I know we're going to get ready to meet some of your other staff, and they're going to kind of expound upon some of the mm -hmm. many programs you guys have to offer, and we can get some more details. Excellent. Well, we've got a great staff here, and I'm, I'm excited you're going to get to talk to a few of them, and I hope uh, your audience on well.com and uh, gets a chance to, to check out AWS at aws.org. Uh, we've got a great website that can point you in the direction of anything you need from us. All right, Matt. Well, thanks again. Thank you, really Jason. Your time. It was great to have you here. All right, guys. So here's the AWS sign. It's all cut out. looks really good. The cutting did real good on the plasma. So I'm taking this wire wheel right here. It's diamond. So... Uh, I'm basically going to remove all this mill scale first. Then after that's done, I'm going to lower this RPM down and take this medium grit right here. It's a red, buff, uh, red pad. So I'm going to take this after the mill scale is all off and actually go down through here just like this all the way down here. Work my way all the way down. But I'm not going to do this part because it's going, we're going to mirror finish. All right, guys? So uh, let's check back with Jason over there in AWS. I'm Daryl Gashler. I'm the Senior Manager of Volunteer Relations at the American Welding Society and I have the great privilege of overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of our AWS sections and AWS student chapters. So how many, how many sections are you currently overseeing right now? So right now uh, in 2019 we have 147 active domestic sections and another 22 sections operating internationally. As well as the, the student division. Yeah, over 100 student chapters. So you're a busy guy busy. There's always a lot going on, uh, and especially right now as we're really trying to enhance our efforts to further connections with our sections of student chapter. So Daryl, these sections that you supervise, what are some of the things that they do that would benefit, you know, your traditional members as well as the student membership? Yep. So starting, say, from the student level, uh, by becoming more active in the section, they're becoming more informed of the industry from folks that are directly involved in the industry. So by attending a section meeting, they're getting to network with folks that are involved. Uh, in the industry and already active in careers that they might want to pursue, whether it be a welder, whether it be an engineer, whether it be a fabricator or an inspector, they're getting to connect one-to-one -one with uh, individuals who have stories and experience in those different areas. So in, a, in addition to the networking aspect, what are some of the other things that go on at a, at a section meeting? So if you had somebody that was interested in going, you know, they've heard about these section meetings, they're just not sure what goes on at one of those events. Sure. That's a great question. So there's welding competitions that are hosted by our sections. There's technical seminars and lectures that are hosted by our sections. So folks looking to hear more from professionals in a more um, uh, organized setting and hear about uh, different topics they might not have access to otherwise. Uh, all of those different things happen at AWS section meetings. And, and you guys have a lot of uh, resources just on AWS's website for section leaders and, and you know different sections. Yeah, so right there on aws.org we have a section toolkit. That section toolkit is filled with dozens of different resources, uh, all specifically meant to serve needs uh, and help our sections overcome challenges they might experience uh, with the, the full understanding. Our section officers are volunteers. We want to make their role as section officers as uh, easy for them as possible. So that section toolkit has dozens of templates, forms, things that'll make their lives easier and uh, help to provide guidance uh, okay. through their operations. And you guys, uh, you do a little bit of training as far as leadership 
for your section officers, right? You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So we have a uh, leadership symposium uh, each year going on 20 years. Uh, and the purpose of that leadership symposium is to bring uh, individuals that have been identified as future leaders within the American Welding Society. They get to visit uh, us down here at the American Welding Society's world headquarters in Miami uh, for a three-day experience where they're guided with the assistance of a professional facilitator through some different um, some different skills that they can use not only to develop their sections and get more members involved uh, in the uh, at the section level of the society, um, but also skills that they can apply in their everyday personal and professional lives. And I got to say, I was I was fortunate enough to be elected last year to attend that because I know it's usually one person from each of the 22 districts That's right. um, that kind of encompasses the 147 sections. That's right. Uh, that one person from each district gets to go, um, and I got to tell you, it was, it was a great experience for me. It really helped me out. You know, I could go back and inform the you know the guys just within my section as to some of the stuff that I learned. So I'm looking forward to you know nominating one of them to go next year. Excellent, excellent. That's what it's all about. It's really about uh, kind of that peer-to-peer -peer network is uh, as part of that society mentality. Everyone looking out for one another and helping us to identify what is the future that's coming up behind them. Okay. Well, Daryl, I appreciate you taking your time. I know you're a very busy man. Um, I'll let you get back to work. But thanks for taking the time Great. to talk with us. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'm gonna jump over here and show you guys how to do this uh, mirror finishing. So basically, I got this gr uh, dual action sander right here. You gotta basically put this on the grind mode, not DA mode, so I lock this in here, and this basically grinds, grinds it. But first, I'm gonna start at low grit. I'm gonna start about 80 grit. Then I'm gonna, we're doing that all over with 80 grit. Then we're gonna slowly step that up to like uh, 150, 220, and I take it up to like 2,000 grit. But once I hit like 1,500 grit, we're gonna switch over to wet sanding basically get a bucket of water or on a squirt bottle. I'm basically have this in the block because I want to try to keep this flat as possible when I'm wet sanding. Because you want to basically keep it flat so the metal won't have no concaves in it or nothing. So guys, I'm gonna get started on this and uh, we're gonna check back with Jason Becker. My name is Eduardo Guerra. I am the Instructional Design Manager for the Education and Training Department uh, for AWS. So what all does that cover? Uh, well, Education and Training is a pretty, uh, a pretty broad descriptor. Uh, in terms of what we offer. Uh, there are two primary components to the types of training we offer. Uh, typically, uh, we have the live instructor-led component, uh, which essentially is uh, our, our seminars, which uh, typically cover uh, CWI exam preparation, uh, also exam uh, preparation for the CRI exam, and uh, for anyone looking to uh, renew uh, or recertify, rather, their, uh, their CWI. Uh, we also have a robust online uh, set of offerings uh, as far as our online educational library and those are a set of online courses uh, totaling 18 in total uh, that cover a variety of, of topics uh, directly related to welding or tangentially related to the welding industry so they cover everything from the basic welding processes uh, SMAW, GMAW, uh, GTAW uh, cutting uh, to things like economics of, of welding, uh, safety, reading welding symbols and then some more advanced topics as well, so metallurgy is in there as well. So you mentioned the online curriculum and stuff. Who would that kind of benefit? I mean, who's you know your ideal end user for that? Uh, the question for that is anybody who's busy, which is really anybody. Um, we find that uh, welding students or welding professionals uh, don't always have the time uh, to commit to furthering their studies in large blocks of time. Uh, sometimes that's even true of those looking to uh, partake in the CWI seminar, which is uh, typically a six-day endeavor uh, away from home. And so in preparation for that, or if they're just doing some of the online learning on their own, uh, it's something that can be done asynchronously, so at their own pace, uh, at their own schedule, uh, while still obtaining the information that you need there through the online and live offerings. So I've, I've actually had a chance to go through that the e-learning software, and one of the benefits that I've noticed just as a CWI, you said you know time is something that you know that everybody kind of seems to run short of. Um, you can actually take these modules on there and receive your personal development hours or professional development hours towards your nine-year research. So that's something I could do at my own pace at home you know, the comfort of my own home or my office without having to travel somewhere else. That's, that's definitely a benefit that sometimes goes overlooked, um, but that's definitely worth considering. Uh, what we don't want folks to do uh, is to just wait until the last wait minute. Wait until the last minute and 
Right, and then then you're sort of scrambling, uh, and so this this sort of just uh, you know kills two birds with one stone essentially, where you get the training that you need, and it's it's worth mentioning that since AWS is uh, ISET accredited, uh, in addition to just PDHs, you can also get CEUs, continuing education units, uh, which are uh, nationally recognized in terms of uh, furthering education. So if there's a requirement that you might have either as a welding engineer or some other uh, maybe fringe career or, or industry, uh, those would also be recognized for that. But, but that definitely does satisfy the requirements for that while also just letting you pick up a new skill or, or bolster an existing one. Well, Eddie, I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for you know, talking to our viewers about all the options and benefits that are available to them and, and how this, uh, the system you guys are creating is going to benefit educators, students, you know, people that currently possess AWS credentials. Um, just wanted to thank you for your time and say I appreciate it. Anytime. All right, guys, so here's the swirls. We did all the swirls. Then uh, next we did the mirror finish here. The mirror's all done. Basically, you can basically look at yourself in it, brush your teeth, whatever you want to do. So uh, the next part, I'm going to take you guys over, and we're going to build the frame. Uh, the frame's going to fit around this, and it's going to sit inside this. So let's go over there and go cut the frame. So I'm building the frame around the AWS sign. Uh, this is 304 stainless. Uh, I ordered 10 feet of it, um, eighth inch thick, two inch angle here, two inch over here and two inch on there. I'm doing 45 degree cuts. I don't have a blade for the saw. Uh, it's kind of dull, so I'm doing it freehand right now with the 045 uh, wider wheel for stainless or steel. And I just basically got one because I wasn't really good at pitcher cuts. I don't do them all the time. I basically got one practice one and just lined it up here like this. Then I drew my lines out. Then I just went over here and did this lines on this one. So all I'm going to do is basically just kind of freehand cut this with a cutoff wheel. Then I'm going to slide this down, unclamp it and slide this down and, and cut the other part of it. Then basically just catch it while I'm cutting it. So at that point, after it's all cut up, uh, we're going to fit it together, tack it, square it up. Then we're going to weld her out, then put her on the back of the AWS sign. Uh, my name is Monica Farr, and I'm the executive director of the AWS Foundation. Okay, so Monica, for the people that don't know, what, what exactly does the foundation do at AWS? So the foundation has really three main thrusts that it focuses on. First is scholarships. We give away uh, over $1.3 million annually in scholarships to students that are pursuing um, various levels of welding-related education. We have scholarships for students uh, that are in a short-term certificate program. Uh, scholarships for students pursuing an associate degree in welding or welding technology. And we also give away scholarships to bachelor degree seeking students, uh, mostly in welding engineering, but sometimes in uh, other engineering fields that are closely aligned with welding. And then you guys also have educator scholarships available too, right? We do, we do. We give away scholarships to, um, to educators that they can utilize to pursue um, a, uh, a, a degree, like a, a master's degree. Uh, we also give scholarships to educators that they can utilize for professional development, so seminars, workshops, um, even certifications. And then we, we also give away some fellowships. We have four graduate fellowships that we award to students who are in PhD level programs so, uh, to help them with their research. Okay, and you guys are, uh, just got into giving out grants to educational institutions, right? We did, so 2017 was the first year that we awarded uh, grants to schools. Um, we have been giving away about $300,000 annually uh, to schools, uh, high school as well as uh, post-secondary schools. And the grants are up to $25,000 for an individual school and it's designed to help them improve or grow their welder training so program. So to kind of expand their facility, equipment, and stuff yep, like that? Yep, to, to improve the program with new equipment, uh, to grow and, and add additional boosts so they can serve more students. So what was the, uh, the third segment? So the third area of focus for the foundation is workforce development. So we're trying to do what we can to uh, improve the image of our industry as well as to uh, educate the general public about the exciting career opportunities that are available within welding. And probably the most visible um, project that we have, or initiative that we have underway in the workforce development space is our careers and welding trailer. So we have a 53 foot trailer that travels around the year, around the country, uh, about 18 weeks a year, exhibiting at really large events, state fairs, maker fairs, uh, agriculture and farm shows. You guys were at Fabtech this year. We were at Fabtech right. this year, absolutely. 
And uh, on the trailer, we have four virtual reality welding simulators, as well as other hands-on exhibits um, and information, like I said, about the many different career opportunities that are available within the industry. All right, well, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming out and uh, talking with us and explaining what the foundation does. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, we got the frame done. We got the sign done. The only thing I got left to do is put lights, and we're going to put some color behind her to let the letters pop. So uh, I'm going to let Jason uh, close this out, and I'm going to let you uh, get back to Jason. All right, thanks for checking us out, guys. We really appreciate your support, and we want to take a moment to thank the American Welding Society for shedding some light on some of the additional benefits and resources that are available to us as members. We also want to wish the American Welding Society a happy birthday. 100 years is kind of a big deal. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification button, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and until next time, make every weld better than your last.